Hello, I'm Simon Whistler. You're watching the Today I Found Her YouTube channel, and in the video today, we're looking at the invention of the cardboard box. The cardboard box goes largely unappreciated, yet it is indispensable to our daily living. It holds all your knickknacks or personal mementos when you move or you have things shipped. It holds our breakfast cereal. It has been used for countless children's art projects, fashioned into a robot's head or a horse's body. Heck, it is even in the International Toy Hall of Fame in Rochester, New York. As with a lot of things that have become commonplace, hardly any thought has been put into how and why it was invented and by whom. In fact, the history of the cardboard box, besides rarely being talked about, isn't particularly well documented either. However, cobbled together through several sources, patents, and old forgotten texts, we can start to piece together the story of the ubiquitous cardboard box. It seems the beginnings of cardboard date back to China, about three or four thousand years ago. During the first and second century BC, the Chinese of the Han Dynasty would use sheets of treated mulberry tree bark to wrap and preserve foods. This fact is unsurprising considering the Chinese are credited with the invention of paper during the Han Dynasty, perhaps even around the same time. The earliest paper ever discovered was an inscription of a map found at Fangmatan in the Gangsu province. Paper printing and cardboard slowly made its way west thanks to the Silk Road and trade among the empires of Europe and China. While cardboard likely ended up in Europe much earlier than the 17th century, the first mention of it comes from a printing manual entitled Mechanic Exercises, which was written by Theodore Lode Vinn, a well-known scholarly author of typography, and Joseph Mixon, a printer of math books and maps, who also rather bizarrely believed that the Arctic was devoid of ice because there was sunlight there 24 hours a day. In the manual it reads, Scabboard is an old spelling of scabbard or scale board, which was once a thin strip of scale or sword wood. The scabbards mentioned in the printer's grammars of the last century were of cardboard or millboard. Through this description, it is inferred that cardboard was used as printing material and to be written on rather than in box form and for storage. The first documented instance of a cardboard box being used was in 1817 for a German board game called The Game of Bicycling, a popular war strategy game. Some points to an English industrialist named Malcolm Thornhill being the first to make a single-sheet cardboard box, but there is scant evidence of who he was or what he stored in the cardboard box. It would be another 40 years before another innovation rocked the cardboard box world. In 1856, Edward Allen and Edward Healy were in the business of selling tall hats. They wanted a material that could act as a liner and keep the shape of the hat while providing warmth and give, so they invented corrugated or pleated paper. Corrugated paper is a material typically made with unbleached wood fibers with a fluted sheet attached to one or two linear boards. They apparently patented it in England that same year, though English patents from prior to 1890 are notoriously difficult to find, and most have yet to be digitized, so we weren't able to read over the patent as we normally would while doing our research. Who knows if Albert Jones of New York ever encountered an Alan Healy tall English hat, but the next fold in the cardboard story belongs to Mr. Jones. In December of 1871, Albert Jones was awarded a patent in the United States for improvements in paper for packing. In the patent, he describes a new way of packing that provides easier transportation and prevents breakage of bottles and vials. Says the patent, The object of this invention is to provide means for securely packing vials and bottles with a single thickness of the packing material between the surface of the article packed, and it consists in paper, cardboard, or other suitable material which is corrugated, crimped, or bossed, so as to present an elastic surface, a protection to the vial, and more effective to prevent breaking than many thicknesses of the same material would be if in a smooth state like ordinary packing paper. The patent goes on to make clear that this new packing method isn't just relegated to vials and bottles, pointing out it could be used for other items as well and is not limited to any particular material or substance, as there are many substances beside paper or pasteboard which can be corrugated for this purpose. A few years after this, the cardboard box that we know and love finally took shape. The Scottish-born Robert Gare owned a paper bag factory in Brooklyn. In 1879, a pressman at his factory didn't see that the press rule was too high and reportedly cut through thousands of small seed bags instead of creasing them, ruining them all before production was stopped and the problem fixed. Gare looked at this and realized if sharp cutting blades were set a tad higher than creasing blades, they could crease and cut in the same step on the press. While this may seem like an obvious thing, it's not something any package maker had thought of before. Switching to cardboard 
instead of paper, this would revolutionize the production of foldable cardboard boxes. You see, in the old way, to make a single sheet folding box, box makers would first score the sheets using a press, then make the necessary cuts with a guillotine knife by hand. Needless to say, this made mass producing foldable boxes prohibitively expensive. In Gare's new process, he simply made dies for his press such that the cutting and creasing were accomplished all in one step. With this modification, he was able to cut about 750 sheets in an hour on his press, producing about the same amount in two and a half hours on one single press as his entire factory used to be capable of producing in a day. At first, Gare's mass-produced foldable boxes were mostly used for small items like tea, tobacco, toothpaste, and cosmetics. In fact, some of Gare's first clients were the Great Atlantic and Pacific Tea Company, Colgate, Pons, and tobacco manufacturer P. Lorillard. However, in 1896, Gare got his biggest client yet for his pre-cut, pre-creased cardboard box, the National Biscuit Company, or Nabisco, with a 2 million unit order. With this leap in product packaging, now customers could purchase pre-proportioned crackers in wax paper lined boxes that kept the crackers fresh and unbroken. Before this, when buying these crackers, they'd have a store clerk get them from a less moisture and vermin controlled cracker barrel. From here, sales of such boxes exploded and by the turn of the century, the cardboard box was here to stay. So next time you are loading your closet with cardboard boxes full of old clothes, buying something off Amazon, or just opening a box of saltine crackers, you can thank a German board game for first commercially using a cardboard box and one of Robert Gare's employees slipping up, inspiring a small but momentous tweak that made mass-produced foldable cardboard boxes possible. So I really hope you liked that video. If you did, please do hit that thumbs up button below and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, over there on the right are a couple of other videos that you might enjoy if you enjoyed this one. And thank you for watching.